Well, I found this old farmhouse a few days ago when I was out driving around scouting. It's pretty interesting. It's got some large structures, some barns, and a chicken coop out in the back there. Um, I think it should offer some interesting photographic opportunities. It's right along a major road here, which does cause me a little bit of concern because, you know, I, I don't want people to think I'm up to no good and stop and question me and stuff. I mean, if they do, it'll be all right because obviously I'll just show them that I'm taking photographs and things of that nature, so shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to go along to the side here, actually see if I can get into this house. I always like to go into homes like this, it's pretty interesting inside. But if not, I think the outbuildings will offer a good amount of photographic opportunities. Okay, so now I'm on the side of the house here, the main house, and I'm going to go up and see if I can get into it. Actually, it looks like it's boarded up there. Uh, somebody has put some, some wooden boards there so you can't open it. So I'll go around to the back side now. See if there's see if there's any way in. I don't know if it has a back door. I already tried the front door and that is not going to work out either. Now the back is pretty overgrown actually. I don't think anyone's been back here in quite a long time. Places like this just interest me because of the history and the idea of what, you know, what, uh, what families might have lived here and what sort of things happened over time. Anything that uh, has uh, gotten older and shown how the effects of time on it interest me. Actually, see if there's a back door back here. No, no back door here either. The windows, some of them are boarded up and shut, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get into here. Obviously, I won't break in entering because that's just rude and illegal. This is, there is nothing on the side here. So it doesn't look like there is a good opportunity to get into this house. But, like I said, I think it will offer some interesting photographic opportunities on some of the outbuildings. I think I'll go explore some of those now. Okay, well, I'm coming up on the chicken coop that I was talking about earlier. Um, like I said, a few days ago when I found this place, I looked, popped my head in here and... So it was a chicken coop. But I'll open it up and show you inside. So, yeah, photographically that could be interesting. It's very, very dark in here. Actually, the video is really brightening it up. Photographically, it would be a very long exposure. Um, I'll try to simulate how I'll try to simulate here how dark it actually is. So this is similar to what it looks like to the naked eye here. So you could imagine photographically how long of an exposure that would be. So I'll start heading around some more. So here's one of the barns. It's a pretty interesting barn there. Might take a photograph of that. And then over here is another building. I don't know what this building was for. It might have been for animals of some sort or just storage. Maybe another chicken coop. So we'll take a look here. Again, this is very dark in here. This looks like some people threw some stuff in here. Probably was another chicken coop or some sort of pen for animals.
Okay, so now I'm using my viewing aid to just sort of get an idea of the composition and the focal length lens that I need to use. Um, this will help me select, you know, it saves time so I don't need to keep switching out lenses and moving the camera all around. Uh, this is a Gortzy, I think it's pronounced, view, uh, viewfinder, multi-focal length viewfinder. So I think I'm going to go with a 300 millimeter standard lens on this. Obviously with the 300 I he have even more limited depth of field. So I think I'll be alright though. I'm also trying to decide if I should go ahead and filter this. And if so, what filter should I use? Maybe I'll just take two. I'm feeling like a green filter to lighten up the foliage a little bit, but the truth is is that I could probably just bleach that out with potassium ferrocyanide after I print it. And the green might, might make the white barn even that much more white and lose detail. So, I don't know. Well, I'll have to see how the scene meters and go from there. Okay, well I'm a little concerned about getting lens flare from the sun. It's um, on the back side of this barn and I don't want it to obviously flare into the lens so I'm going to put on my Lee wide angle hood. Uh, it's wide angle but it'll work just fine for the, the standard 300. But Right now, the light is not flaring into the lens, but I am concerned that by the time I'm ready to actually take the shot, it will. So just for good measure, I'm going to put the hood on there. and Watch for vignetting, of course. Um, to be honest, I got the composition all set up already while the camera wasn't rolling, so I don't really want to move the camera and mess up the composition. I think I got it dialed in pretty nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started metering and so forth. Um, it's in complete shade here. Um, so I might have to do a little overdevelopment and as I said, maybe some filtration. Won't really know until I start metering it. So I'm gonna start doing that now and go from there. I'm using Delta 100. So obviously I'll have to um, account for reciprocity failure here. Okay, so when metering, I use a spot meter. This is a Sekonic L558. Uh, this is the R model, which fires pocket wizards uh, via the uh, radio slave um, when using studio strobes, which obviously I'm not using here. So I'm spot metering, and I'm gonna check my low values and make sure that those register good detail, and then I'll cross-reference with the high values and just indicate development there, just standard zone system work. Um, the good thing about the 558 is that it you can bank in the exposures on the low and the high and then do an average and then you can hold down the button and sort of scan through it and see where the values are it gives an indication in the inside uh, display if you're over or underexposed so you can sort of scan the scene and see where all your values are going to fall um, I'll, I'll meter the low values I'll meter the high values um, Obviously the low values will uh, indicate my exposure and the high value uh, will indicate um, development, just standard zone system work there. So I'll meter here, and put that into memory and find a high value, put that into memory and then average it. It's giving me F64 at 15 seconds and then I'll scan the scene here uh, getting a display of you know just in the display telling me where the other values are going to fall so right now the low values are fine at that exposure f64 at 15 seconds the high values probably I'm probably going to indicate n n plus one development on that so F64 at 15 seconds with reciprocity failure 
I'll take that out to 30 seconds. Probably end up shooting two uh, F64 at 30 seconds and F64 at 45 seconds just for good measure. So I'll go ahead and get my film loaded and then take the shot. So why do I take the dark cloth and drape it over the bellows and everything? And, and that's in case there's any pinholes in the bellows themselves. This way uh, it's a little ex added, uh, a little extra added measure there in case there's any pinholes in the bellows. Now I do check for pinholes in the bellows um, when I'm at home often before I go out or something like that. So there, I'm not concerned that there are any pinholes in these bellows, but it's just a practice I've gotten into over the years. Um, I don't see why it hurts any. So let me pull the dark slide and we'll start the exposure. Okay, just check my settings. Okay, we're good. All right, we'll take this shot. I'm actually just counting in my head. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I use the stopwatch. It all depends on how long the exposure is. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so I'm just going to flip the, uh, the film holder and shoot another exposure. Well, that was enjoyable. Hopefully the shot turns out well. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't, but then again, it's large format film photography and you don't know until you develop the film. I'm going to start tearing down now and then move on to my next location and see what I can find there. So we're heading up to the main barn now. Again, it's very dark in here, photographically. Like I said, the video camera really compensates for that a lot so but that's good because you can sort of see what it looks like in here it's actually pretty tall uh, to be honest with you you need to be careful when you go into places like this I actually came into this barn already when I scoped it out or scouted it out Places like this are wonderful, but they are really difficult to shoot in because of how dark they are. I know I keep saying that, but it is true, and if any of, any of you shoot large format and have ever tried to photograph in extremely dark areas, you know how frustrating it can be, uh, both to compose and just how long the photographs are, reciprocity failure and everything. This is pretty interesting. A lot of light in here. It's definitely brighter in this spot, so. Don't really see a lot to photograph in here, though. So I think.
think there's one other area back here that is kind of interesting. This looks like it was, oh, just some sort of storage area or junk place where they just have thrown a bunch of stuff. Uh, interesting to look at photographically. Probably a little too busy for my taste. Well, I just finished photographing at the second location of the day. It was this small crate with these flattened coffee cans in it. I didn't do any videoing of myself actually uh, taking the photograph because once I set up and um, took a meter reading and understood, um, did the exposure calculations and understood that it was going to be a 60 minute long exposure. Yes, I just said one hour. Um, I think that's pretty ludicrous. Um, once I understood that it was gonna be that long, I wanted to just concentrate on getting the exposure correct and making sure everything was um, as calculated out as possible. What I did was I shot with a 250 millimeter lens on, at f45 with quite a bit of front tilt. The front tilt was so that I could get the uh, the focus on the front of the box here and as much of the cans as possible. Um, with this close-up of a shot I had to rack the bellows out pretty far uh, which I had to take into consideration the bellows extension factor there which contributed to such a long exposure um, be, but because I'm so close I'm gonna have some fall off on the focus and that's okay um, I, I wanted to sort of uh, bring attention to the front of the box um, uh, uh, bring attention to the front of the box the most um, when I metered I metered the scene at f45 at 8 minutes because of the Delta 100 I had to take it to 16 minutes because of reciprocity failure and then with the Bell's extension factor it, uh, it the calculated exposure was 60 minutes long so this is either going to be a great success or a colossal failure either way I'll include it in the video um, I'm crossing my fingers but uh, it is what it is, and I'm going to pack up and go to my next location.
earlier I saw these ladders and I decided to come back. I thought they were pretty interesting the way they move off into the distance. I ended up shooting with a 210 lens to get a nice wide angle view. Had to do a little bit of a front swing and a back swing also in order to get everything into focus or as much in focus as I could. Ended up shooting it with HP5. Um, the reason I chose to do HP5, well, one, it's rated at 400. I rated it at 200. Um, but also I know I'm going to have to give under development because this is a fairly contrasty scene as the light is coming in off in the distance and then fading off um, to the back of the actual scene here. Um, I shot at f32 at 30 seconds and one minute. Um, I think the one minute long exposure is going to be a little bit better. I placed the, uh, the back area up in here at zone 4 on the one minute long exposure, but then I sort of thought, well, my concern there was that the hot spots or the, the bright parts of the scene were measuring at like zone eight. Um, with underdevelopment, it'll put it down to zone seven. But then I thought, well, I better take one more, and I cut the exposure to only 30 seconds on the second one, and that should put the, uh, the, the lighter parts of the scene on zone six. Um, I don't know if it'll give enough detail in the shadow, but if that one doesn't work out, then I can always use the, the first exposure that was one minute long and uh, just burn in the foreground areas on the actual photograph. So I think that uh, this, this one offered some challenges with the swings, um, especially the back swing and trying to get everything into focus. Um, I think I got it all, but we'll, we'll see in the photograph once it's finished.